In this clip, I talk with Docker captain Michael Irwin about the new experimental tool from Docker called Docker App and how you can use it to deploy multi-container solutions to Kubernetes and Swarm. So tell us a little bit about Docker App. How Before we even get into the demo, like what is this thing? Yeah, so good question. So Docker App was actually announced at uh, DockerCon in San Francisco last year. Um, and it was basically released as an experimental tool. Um, so they, they had this completely separate tool. It's not bundled into the engine or anything because they wanted to iterate, play around with it, and have fast release cycles in the engine itself. But the whole idea is... You know, we make compose files, and compose files define the services that need to run an application. But if I wanted to share an application with you, okay, so let's just take your dog versus cats, you know, voting app here. Okay, so if I wanted to share that with you, the only way that I could do that is to put it in a GitHub repo somewhere and you clone the repo, then do a stack deploy or compose up or, or something like that. Okay. Right. And, and so the, the team at Docker recognized it. They said, you know, if you really think about what an image is, an image is simply just a portable file system. Okay. And so, sure, we, we build container images that know how to run Nginx or Tomcat or um, PHP applications or Node apps. You know, they're specifically tuned for this. But at the end of the day, it's really just a portable file system. Yeah. So what if we made a special version of an image that just contained a compose file? Okay. And so they built this tool that takes a compose file and basically puts it into an image and now shares it. And so that they call that a Docker app image. And so now all I have to do then is say, hey, Brett, pull this image, which you already know how to do because you've already got the Docker CLI installed and all that kind of stuff. Pull this image. And then so the Docker app tool will pull that image, recognize that, hey, this is a special image, extract the compose file out of it, and then do the stack deploy or a, um, Docker Compose up or, or whatever it is that you want from there. Um, so it's really just a way to share these Compose files in a much easier way. So we're so it's a lot of reuse there, right? So the Compose yeah. files in an image format, same as a regular image format, right? Yep. And it's and it's storing on an image registry like Docker Hub, same as always, right? Yep. And a lot of for for years, I mean, I'm sure you were thinking the same thing as I was years ago. I mean. There's been multiple attempts at a, you know, Compose Hub, right? Yeah, a place absolutely. to share Compose files. And Docker, instead of saying, well, we need a separate, instead of us all thinking that we needed something separate, Docker was like, well, let's just put it in its own image. And then it becomes its own unique artifact that is, you know, can be versioned or tagged just like uh, your code images. Yep. And that way you can deploy uh, sort of a multi container solution the same way you would deploy a single image into a container, right? Absolutely. So yeah. you, I guess you've got some stuff for us. You want to show off yeah. how so, this works? Um, so oh, yeah, let me set everything up here. And I'm going to share my screen. All right. Let me know when you've got it. Yep. Okay. Looking good. So Docker app as of today anyways, is as I mentioned earlier, is still a separate utility, a separate tool. Um, so you can watch for releases. Now I'm actually watching for everything because um, I'm keeping up with where Because you're going. obsessed. I know it. Um, but it's, it's moving so quickly still right now that it's, it, it's good to know what's going on. Um, but you can download it and they've got a pretty good write-up on how to do everything. I'm, I'm not going to go too much through how to actually create a Docker app, all that stuff. I want to kind of show you know, what it is that we're, we're doing with it. Um, but here's, here's the place to go. There's actually a pull request open right now that, that's being worked on to convert Docker app from being just a standalone utility to actually a plugin for the main Docker CLI. Um, so eventually, it, it'll all kind of be integrated together, but um, who knows how soon that'll actually finish. But right. anyways, um, so you install it, um, you just download it, put it in somewhere that you can access it and go from there. Um, it's a single binary, right? So you're just downloading yeah, exactly. a, a binary. Um, so, yeah. I, I actually took your, so you have an example on, if I close it, the uh, first cat here. Yes, I, I love that uh, domain that you have. That <laughs> the <laughs> GitHub <laughs> links are too long. They're too long. <laughs> I know. Um, and so at the bottom here, you actually have a, a voting.docker app. 
Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I'll just go through it real quick, just to explain it to people that are new. Can here. you can you zoom in on that? Can you uh, yeah, zoom absolutely. in on Chrome? Yeah. There you go. That good. Thank you. All right. So with a Docker app, there's there's two different ways that you can deploy these, and this particular one, it's it's all in a single file, and you'll see that there are three sections to this file, and they're all um, delimited, they're all separated by just these three dashes. So the first spot is basically just metadata, just information about the Docker app. So you have a, a version, you've got the name of the app, a description, uh, the namespace, and then the list of maintainers, and then you've got all the services and the second part here is just the normal Docker Compose file. Okay. And you probably just lifted one of the ones that you already had and, and put it in here and did. didn't have to really yeah. change much. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think I was trying to keep it in sync with the actual Docker Compose in there, but I maybe didn't. Not sure. Yeah. I mean, if you get notified of releases, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think they're releasing that, but anyways. Yeah. Um, and so then the, this third section is for application settings. And I'll come back to that in, in a minute. But so for right now, it's just an empty object. So you've got no settings, which is completely fine. And, and I'll show where that comes into play here in a minute. But so with, with, this, comp with this Docker app file, um, you know, you can deploy it. Um, let's go push. Okay, let's just scroll down here. Um, so if I had that clone, I could say Docker app push and I could tag it. And it's going to take that Docker app file and build that specific image and push that to Docker Hub. And you can change, you can again, push it to your own image registries. If you have your own private ones on prem or wherever else, you can push it to ECR, EKS, whatever, uh, EKS, um, you know, the Amazon, sorry, yes, yeah. or Azure or anywhere else. It, it, Any of the registries. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just a registry. Who cares? Um, so one, one of the things that I did is I, I took your Docker app file, and I added a couple settings to it because I want to show how we're using Docker app here at Virginia Tech on the team that I'm on. Um, let me probably zoom in on this a little bit to you. Because okay. there's another actually really cool feature with Docker app that I don't think a lot of people know about. Okay. Make it a little bit wider. Okay. So with Docker app, okay, let me... So it's like a superset of the Docker Compose YAML, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so if if I've got this Docker app here, and again, it, when Docker app takes this Compose file, it's going to process it, and you can apply settings to it. And I can create settings to change ports and all this other kind of stuff. But one of the, the settings that's actually really cool is for each service, okay, I can add an x-enabled attribute to it. And that's not normally there for Compose. Okay, this is a specific Docker app thing. But Compose will allow you to add any X dash. These are called extension fields. And you can just add your own metadata, your own stuff to it. Okay? And in this case, Docker app recognizes this X dash enabled. And if this is truthy, so if I have any sort of value to it over here, then this service will actually get deployed. And so I've got this for my vote app because I may, I may do some development on it or whatever. Um, and I'll explain the kind of use cases here in a second. Vote, the result, I put another one, but it's got a different flag. So I can enable or disable these independent of each other. And then down in the settings, I define the default settings and just say I'm going to enable all of them. Okay. So what that allows me to do, if I do a Docker app, so one of the commands is render, in which it's going to take the compose file and just render it out. Render it out to a, uh, just to, to, a, to a, a, a compose, compose file. file. Yeah, okay. Okay. So Docker app render, and then here's my compose file. And any settings that I may have set are going to be applied. So if, if we actually look at those two particular ones, the result X enabled is true because, well, the default setting was true. Oh, now, so I, if it was false, I see. So if it was false, it just wouldn't even be in the output? Like yeah, it, this it, entire service would be gone. Right, Okay. And, and I can use settings for lots of different things to change ports, or maybe I want to have a different host name, a, a different base host name for all the, the apps, whatever. Um, and so settings allow you to change all that. Okay. Now, cool. so let's do the same thing. I'm going to do a render, but I'm going to set enable result for false. Okay. Now, if I look in here, I, I don't have the result. When, when it renders it, it renders the services in alphabetical order. So I've okay. got Redis, but I yeah. 
and vote, but I don't have results in here. So yeah, and I think that's a feature that people have been asking for in Docker Compose for a while. Like, how do yeah. I, you know, can I can I control individual services or prevent certain things and all that? And it sounds like that really this is the solution for that, not waiting for a Docker Compose feature. Yeah, so what I could do, and I don't have the uh, proxy going, so it's not going to work. But so I can render this and then just pipe it directly to co Docker Compose, say, read the file coming from standard in, and let me just do an up. And it's going to fail because I don't have the, the proxy network defined. Sure. I don't yeah. have the rest of it working. But at least tried to run it. Okay. And so I, I can do some pretty cool stuff here. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to use this Docker app that I pulled from somewhere. Okay. In this case, I'm just using it locally. But imagine that or you had created, you had pushed it to the registry. I'm going to pull that app. I'm going to apply different settings to it. And then I'm going to run it on, on my machine. Okay. So the Docker, so the Docker app render and then piping that into Docker Compose, that would be good if you already had the Docker app file, that the dot Docker app file on your machine. But that's not always the case. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, since I'm, I'm not, let me look at the full Docker app. I do the help here. I can give it an app name, which app name could be a remote Docker app. So I could say. Um, I actually pushed one up to voting.dockerapp010. Let's go fetch it. Oh, maybe I've got that. Um, okay, just had the wrong name. And so it's actually fetching from the remote registry from Docker Hub and then rendering that out. Very cool. So that render command can take a local or remote. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, this is a, a remote. Okay. Now, so one of the things I, I should have mentioned to you, so I could do a Docker app deploy, uh, voting app, Docker app, zero, one, zero. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually create the network and the services and everything. And so this is actually, so if I'm creating services, that means I'm deploying this as a swarm, swarm stack here. So this okay. would this Docker app deploy in this case would replace a Docker stack deploy, right? Yeah, so this would replace the Docker stack deploy using a stack file that's on Hub right now. And that's a common question we get. In fact, someone in chat, Cody, is asking around: Is Docker app going to be used in production? And I think that it's for both. There are both uses. You just saw piping in a Docker Compose so that you can take that Docker app and then spit it out into Docker Compose file and run Docker Compose up all the same one liner or using this Docker app deploy, which is specifically designed for deploying stack files, but instead of deploying them from your like a local stack file that you happen to have on your machine, you're deploying it from an image in a registry, which it, that image stores the Docker app YAML, right? Absolutely. And, and you can also use the deploy with a Kubernetes orchestrator. So if I look at Docker app deploy at the help here, I can actually um, set the orchestrator to Kubernetes and, and it uses the composed to Kubernetes stuff and uh, can deploy to Kubernetes cluster as well, too, which is pretty sweet, too. Yeah, and we're having a lot. I mean, there's a lot of movement on that, right? Docker yeah. announced, uh, I think it was around DockerCon in December, right? They announced that they were open sourcing or they did open source the yep. Kubernetes, Compose for Kubernetes, I believe is what it's called, repo. Yeah, something and like that. yeah, and that means that you could now use this Docker app or any compose file to a Kubernetes cluster as similar to what you would use on a Swarm cluster. And you can simply change these. In fact, if you've even if recently, recent versions, you've played around with the Docker stack deploy command, you, you have those options in there as well. And you also have them here for the changing the orchestrator. In fact, you can even set the default orchestrator. Absolutely. So it's, it's Docker trying to get this common high level abstraction of what an an app is right of a, of a stack of apps, I guess. And then trying to get that consensus across the different orchestrators so that we have, cause like you're experimenting and others are experimenting with running two types of orchestrators using swarm for certain types of things, using Kubernetes for other types of things and to have completely different, you know, workflows and files and configurations is tough. So I think it's really cool that Docker is experimenting with this. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. I'll shut up. All good. <laughs> so with this idea of being able to build a compose, file, I'm getting excited now that you can tell. <laughs> uh, with having this, this compose file now that I can ship around, 
what other cool stuff can we do with it? And and so what I'm about to show you is actually the reason we even started looking at Docker app in the first place. Because when obviously when I first heard about it, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I can just run a single command to deploy WordPress. Awesome. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, okay, what what else can I do with this? Um, and so we the, the team that I'm on here, and I made a couple of little cheap slides here. Um, let me know if that's big enough there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, so the, the development team that I'm on, we don't have a, a microservice application. It's just a single monolithic backend, but we have that backend exposes API. And then we have several different front end clients. So we had kind of have a desktop client. We have a, a mobile client that's still web-based. Uh, we've got an admin client, but all these different clients are different web-based front ends that are pointing back to the same API. So when we actually deploy our application, there's several different services. There's the API, then there's a the desktop client, a mobile client, a, you know, a doc slash user guide. There's all these different things that we have to keep track of. And, and they're all in different repos. We use GitLab. Um, it's awesome. And so each of these different components are in different repos. Okay. And so as a developer, and I'm just going to walk this through and we'll, we'll see an example of it here in a second. So as a developer, they, they work on their code. They push their code to their, the repo for the component that they're working on. Um, the CI runners take off from there. And pretty much every component, we have it um, doing compiling if that's necessary. Then it runs a bunch of uh, unit tests, integration tests, that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, container images are built. They're pushed to a registry. And then one of the things that we do is we update a Docker app compose file and then we push that, okay? So what kind of changes are we making in that compose file? Okay, so next slide, all right. So in our compose file, so as Brett mentioned earlier, it, it's a bad idea to use latest for everything, okay, for images. So we tag all of our images with the git commit hash that was used to build that container image. Okay, so here's an example here. Um, we had a Docker, the, the compose, or sorry, the compose file for Docker app you know, it was at Summit API, the, just the, the product we're working on is called Summit. So the API was at image tag 3997, blah, blah, blah. A developer pushed code. And then what that did is it, um, you know, it built the container image and everything. And then as another step in that build, we update the compose file to say, here's the latest version of the, the API. Okay. So now we have a compose file that has the latest image tags for every component in the application. We've also taken this to another level too to say we have a different Docker app tag for each of the different feature branches that are working on, but that I'll have to defer how that works to a blog post. Um, but so again, think I'm working on the master branch. I push code. I've got a compose file that's got the latest versions of everything. And now I can basically take this Docker app and deploy the latest version of my application stack, regardless of who pushed code where. So as a developer, now if I want to start working on code, I can pull that compose file. And we, we call this summit in a box. Um, so I can pull summit in a box, disable the components I'm going to work on. So I mentioned earlier, okay, there's the API, there's um, a desktop client, there's docs, et cetera. Maybe I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to work on the user guide, the docs. Okay, so I, I want the latest versions of everything else. I'm going to disable the, the docs service. Okay, so I get latest versions of everything else with some in a box. I disable the docs. And then if I go into that component and do Docker compose up, then I have a dev enabled version. And I'll do a demo of this here in just a second, because it may be hard to kind of grok what I'm saying here. Um, but when I do Docker compose up within that project, it's going to hook into all the networks and the proxy and everything else that came from the summit in a box from the main Docker app. All right. Okay. So demo time. All right, um, let's get rid of this one. So let me do first, and we've made a little, just a little CLI command that just wraps Docker app anyways. But um, so if I do a, a summit um, config, what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull the Docker app and uh, run the render command, and then it pipes it to compose. So at the end of the, the, at the, end of the day, this is running a Docker compose config on a compose file that was generated from Docker app. All so right. we just kind of wrapped it. Um, and so here's the full Docker Compose. That's great. I'm not going to bore you with all the details there. 
But what I can do is I can say, all right, summit, and I want to run these services. I want to disable, oops, I have guide spelled wrong. Docs user, good. <laughs> yeah. um, it can be but, so I'm going to disable these services, and all these are doing are just setting the flags for what we saw earlier. We just built a little CLI GUI around it. Okay. Yeah. So I spin this up, and again, it's we see it's actually running Docker Compose F, and it, it piped the output to a, a file rather than just directly to standard in. And so I see these services spin up, again, using the latest Docker app that was produced by our CI system. Okay. But, you know, I'm working on docs. I didn't start up the docs. And so what I'm going to do in my docs repo is I'm going to do a Docker Compose up. While it's doing that, I'll, I'll show you what that compose file looks like. So for this, I'm defining a service. I've defined the image. This is just an MK docs um, static site generator. I'm going to mount in my code, but I'm going to hook into the network that was defined. We just called it front end. And this was a network that was created from the Docker app. Okay. okay. And so that's why it's external here because it's defined externally. And we just set the traffic labels, all that kind of stuff. So now if I go to docs summit lo oops, sorry, local summit, okay. here's, here's my app. Okay. And I know it's super fancy, I know. Um, but let, let's just go and change one of these files here. And let's make it, I always in my demos like to make things more exciting. And so I do that just by adding exclamation points. Um, so I'm going to update this. My local dev mode is running MK Docs. It's watching for file system changes. It's going to rebuild. Um, if I just start watching the logs down here, we'll see that it rebuilds. Um, and if I go back to my page and refresh, okay. uh, there it goes. All right. Now it's more exciting. Okay. It's but yet it's, better. It, version can, version 10,000. Exactly. And, and yet, so I can spin up, if I can go to the other ones. So this is the, the desktop client that's spun up. It's still spinning up the API, which is why there's configuration error. I haven't finished starting yet. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm using the latest version of all the other components that were built by the CI system. And all I have to do is I can use Docker app to spin up my app in a box right and uh and so then i disable the service that i'm actually going to do development on spin up a dev ready container for that particular service but hooks into the place where it would have been if i had just started from scratch so this one tool is got a lot it's got a lot it's a, funny how little it does but there's a lot to it right and yeah. that's i think that's one of the hardest things that a lot of us were when we were first looking at docker app was like Okay, I, I get what its functionality is, but the various ways to use it aren't exactly obvious. So it, it definitely yeah. can help you spit out compose files that are more flexible for local Docker Compose use. It also has, so that, that's the render command, right? And then it's got this ability to make images and then allow you to push those images up to a registry, right? Yeah. It's got, yeah. And it's making images not of your code, but of your compose file. And any other, and, and I think there's other stuff that it puts, it, well, it puts the Docker app file in there and I'm not sure what else goes in that. You can image. bundle other config or other yeah. um, resources, that kind of stuff with it too. So yeah. if you're, uh, you know, if, if your swarm stack is uh, using config files or something like that, you can actually bundle some kind of default config files with the app itself. Okay. And then it also does the deploy command, which allows you to push to a cluster that, Compose file that's inside that image with the various options and things that you can set on there. So that's it, and it, I'm sure it does more than that, right? It's probably yeah. just a little bit, a little bit of it. And then we've got a, we've got changes coming down the road, but um, I don't know that we have time to go into all the entire world of CNAB. That's probably a conversation yeah. for another day. Yeah. But there is sort of this coming soon stuff that we're going to talk about with um, like. CNAB and the standard that Docker had announced. I, I don't know if you mentioned it yet. You might just want to, what is it? <laughs> yeah, so CNAB is, is an attempt to kind of standardize. It's, it stands for Cloud Native Application Bundling or Bundle. And it is basically a way, a specification on 
how can we package up um, cloud native applications? Yes, some. If I'm going to deploy an app, part of the app is okay. I'm going to deploy this on Kubernetes, but part of it's also well, I need to go set up this database in Azure or uh, RDS or whatever. And so there's lots of different pieces that are actually needed to deploy a an application. And so it's this attempt to basically put all that into a single spec, and you can use whatever tools. Okay, I use Terraform for this, but then I'm going to use direct CLI commands for that or or whatever. Allow you to bundle all that together. Yeah, and we haven't really seen. I think it's it's still. I feel like in the idea phase and not in the we've got a bunch of tools that are very helpful and productive for you it's more of a it's a it's a lot of theory and standardization and stuff like that yeah the the spec is still moving around quite a bit too um so the, the spec was this was also announced at DockerCon in barcelona in december there was a joint announcement between docker and microsoft and uh and so since then many of the other uh, big players have, have jumped into and have decided uh all right hey let's Let's work together on this. And so, yeah, the spec is still evolving quite a bit. Yeah. And I know they have a website. I'm, I'm putting in chat the uh, Docker app link and then the CNAM link um, for, but, you know, Docker app, something you can get productive with today. And CNAB is more about the standardization across all different types of APIs that we create for creating these types of different abstractions. So it's a little bit more esoteric, maybe not something that you can get really productive with right away, but if you want to read the background on it, it's pretty interesting in the thought process from Gareth and other people in the community that are sort of leading this effort. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe and the notification bell down there will let you know when I go live every week to take your questions on Docker and DevOps. You can watch these videos over here or you can just go watch those cat videos you've been meaning to watch. <laughs>